Huh. Hey guys, it's Dane at Jonah Guitars and uh, I got a brand new build series uh, I'm gonna start uploading. Uh, it's about this guy right here, the gecko, and uh, all of the uh, the whole process of building will be uh, covered. It's, it's going to be a very complete uh, series. So I hope you join me and uh, we'll see you there. Okay, we're back. Oh, I got to turn the radio off. Keep the copyright Nazis happy. Okay, so uh, let's see. Turn this a little bit, and like so, move this down. So, um, I I don't know that you'd be able to see it in the video, but I've taken um, taken some some passes with the with the block block plane, and uh, up both sides just to take you know a little bit. It's not tons, but um, and just. Here we go. So I've got a nine and a half um, radius gauge and a 16 radius gauge. I'm already at the top end of the neck here where I'm just barely out of range. Uh, I'm already pretty much at 16, just, just whisking those corners off. Um, and so I've got a 16 inch block, if I can get into the camera with it. And uh, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run I'm going to run 16, which is less than I need radius-wise up on the top end. So I'll run 16, then I'll then I'll work that top end into 12, and then, like I said, I'll connect the dots. There again, I'm not going to do the whole process, but I'm just going to show you uh, what my what my thought process is here. And uh, I'll be back. We're always talking about Stumac. We'll uh, we'll cover that up. I don't have any problems with Stumac. I don't want to be accused of outright product placement. So that's why I left it there in the camera long enough for you to get a good look at it. I have no affiliation with uh, Stumac whatsoever. And this is how I typically radius my boards, even when I'm just doing a standard, you know, one size radius. Um, and uh, I, um, I have a wide belt sander and I actually made a device for it, but um, I think I've mentioned before, I make about one, one guitar a year as far as the custom guitars. I do a lot more repairs than I do actual uh, guitar builds. Um, uh, currently, I mean, I'd love to build more guitars. If people would order more guitars. I'd build more guitars. The um, and so and so, I made a device to uh, to actually hook to the uh, the wide belt, and it's just basically a big pendulum. Grizzly actually makes one that they sell with the same sander that I, I own. Um, but you know, it was a few hundred dollars, I think, if I recall. So I made one out of just uh, some angle stock, and um, but you know for one fretboard, if I were setting up to build you know uh, half a dozen of them or or a dozen or something, then I would set the thing up and I would radius all the fretboards at once. But uh, it's not worth setting it up for one board, uh, even if I did a couple a year. I would just go ahead and radius and by hand. I have uh, I'm looking at where my where my sanding is taking place. I have a piece of 60 on there. And what's been widely referred to now as the masking super glue and masking tape trick. Uh, I've been doing something similar to that uh, here. And basically, I only put tape on 
the block and super glue the paper to it. There's no reason to put masking tape on the paper because that's all going to get come off and get thrown away anyway. I'm already, uh, and I don't think you can see it, but I'm already a little heavier on this side than I'm on this side. So I am uh, going to turn this around, try to try to put a little more pressure on this corner. I just use my file card. I'm not sandpaper. And I have a piece of chalk right here from when I was doing the inlays. There it is. And so well, I'm gonna just go across here. see where I'm at. I think I've already pretty much got the nut into the thing. I told you it wasn't much up there after I'd already whisked the corners off so I'm almost I've almost already sanded all the way. Now you can see here I'm Taking my sanding marks out to there and about there, so I'm a little, still a little uh, lower on this side already. I want to keep my my board as parallel as I can, thickness-wise, you know, on the end of the board, here so that my fretboard is parallel to the top of the the neck. I don't want to create a twist. In the, in the fretboard as I sand the, uh, the radius in. I've already taken most of the chalk off. Looks pretty even now. straight edge and I'm going to double check across the center of the board make sure it's still uh, you know flat straight uh, from the way things are standing out I can't see I think it would be I have hit here a little bit um, as far as I know the truss rod uh, I left it slack 
it's a two-way and so it's right in the center Okay, it's got just a slight hump right in the middle, and that's why I'm, I'm sanding the center off. Very, very slight, but uh, it's straightening itself out, so that's good. Um, as thick as the neck is right now, it's, you know, it's a full inch and a quarter with the, uh, or even more, inch and three-eighths with the fretboard on it. There's no way I'm going to bend that with the truss rod, so that's why I just leave it in the middle. So you can see that I'm, I'm pretty much exactly the same on both sides here. It's flat right where the inlay is, is flat. And uh, from here to about here, and then it's, it's, it's radius all the way across the top and all the way up to the nut. It's that 16, 16 inch radius. And um, so I'm going to concentrate on this end and get this radius here and then I'm going to put some, uh, I've got a 12 inch or 9 and a half inch block and I'll sand uh, from the top end in a bit to accomplish that uh, that 12, I keep saying the wrong numbers, 10 and 9 and a half inch radius and uh, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, there's uh, no reason to have a bunch of this on here. All right, so uh, a few five another five minutes worth of sanding on this end, and I've got just a very very slight flat right on the very top here. Um, I went ahead and I I taped um, just put some assembly tape across the end of the block here because what I did on this end, um, much like you would if you were doing fall away. On the opposite end, you'd, you'd tape that side up so you're not sanding all the way, just the very end. So the same thing here, but I pushed up to about the middle of the block, just concentrated right on this edge here, and um, so I've got my my nine and a half, very uh, well, not roughly, but this isn't you know final sanding by any means, but I've got my nine and a half radius right up here. Um, it's actually maybe just a little over that and so that'll flatten out as I go. I'll make sure. And then I've got my 16 uh, down on this end and I keep double checking my parallel parallel from the, the well you can't see what I'm doing. I was eyeballing down this way. Uh, parallel from this flat surface to the you know where where my corners are here, so it's not it's not skewed either way. And I'm going to look at the other end right now, and uh, that end is good too. All right, so down the middle of the board with the straight edge, um, pretty flat. I've got just the slightest little bit of fall away up here on the on the the neck end, the <laughs> the butt end where it's going to join the body. And uh, and then out here, if you and now this is where it's different than being on a cylinder, you you are going to test straight with the parallel to the edge of the neck, and I've got a bit of a hump there, which is what I would expect to have at this point, since I've got a nine and a half here and a sixteen here, uh, and I have not tried to connect the dots yet, and the same thing over here. I've got a definite rock right in the middle. Uh, so that's what I'm going to work on now and uh, like I said this I only had you off the camera for five or seven minutes doing both of these finishing off this 16 down here and then putting the nine 
and a half up at the top edge. So I put the nut in. So um, another thing I'll just make quick note of, this is just a piece of uh, mahogany block here and um, you can see I still have sandpaper stuck to that side of the block. I just ran this through the joiner just one pass before I stuck this paper down to it. So uh, you know much is said about having the precision ground um, you know uh, aluminum or steel beams to stick your paper on and that's good if you don't have access to a joiner but you know taking a not even a 64th off of this thing with one pass every time I need to make sure it's straight and I take a pass and I put it up on the table on the uh, on the joiner which is perfectly straight and double check it and so it's perfectly straight block with a piece of sandpaper on and so I should uh, do the same thing as my straight edge it should rock right there and I do so that's what we're going to do we're going to connect the dots and there again there's not going to be uh, a lot to see I am going to chalk it so what I want to try to do is not lose my chalk down here and then just lose this chalk in the middle and I do have a longer beam and eventually I'll get to that and I'll I'll sand the entire board and I'll follow that entire conical shape uh, for the final sanding. And so it does feel weird. It feels very strange to me to be sanding parallel to the edge of the neck because uh, it's not something I normally would be doing. everything all the way up top to the nut and to the back end you know, staying staying parallel to the to the lay of the strings and dust that off and straight in and see what we got this is something I suppose I'm going to have to chase for a while, so I'm not going to leave you on the camera watching. See, I've still got a hump, got a rock over there, and a bit of one on this side. And in the middle, I'm good. I've got, I'm not touching the very end of the board over on this end. I'm not touching the very end. I'm very straight from the nut all the way but for what I'm what I'm off of the board here I may be a couple thousands so um, I'm, I'm very close to where I need to be I'm gonna go ahead and turn you off again and uh, bring you back in it'll be much later because I've got a I've got somewhere to be tonight it's Christmas Eve so uh, I'm gonna be uh, heading out a little later on take care Merry Christmas It'll be late when you see it, of course. Okay, I've been uh, just going at this thing. I did uh, 60, 60 grit. I, I, you know, like I said, I connected the dots here. I had the nine and a half and the 16 inch, and I uh, kept uh, there again. Maybe not even another five minutes after I turned it off, I had that straightened out there, and then just uh, blended over both sides. Went to uh, 80 grit on the side of the beam and then uh, pulled the uh, 60 off of here and this is 150 on here and so I've just been doing the 150. Um, I don't normally go to, you know, I go up to about three, 320. So um, and that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and uh, 
run this 150 and then uh, 220 and then 320. Now, the, the longest part of the whole process is is uh, sticking the tape on the beam and super gluing the tape and then sticking the paper on it. And uh, you can shoot an uh, accelerator on the paper before you put it on there and it just kind of helps speed things up. The um, I was talking about one of these I'm not sure now. I think it was this guy that I said didn't look like he was alive. Didn't have a lot of life in him. But having sanded him down some here, now he's starting to look uh, pretty nice, actually. And uh, you, you can, may or may not be able to tell from there. I'll, have, I'll move it later on uh, when it's not clamped down. So uh, all these things are looking pretty good, actually. And so I'm just going to be working working through the, the grits here. Like I said, I was at 60, and I went to 80, and then I went to uh, 150 here. So 220 and 320, and I will be done. There is absolutely no reason uh, that I've ever been convinced of. I've talked about this in previous videos, I think, that uh, there's no reason to go to uh, any any finer than 350. I mean, you get you get to a point, and all you're doing is, you know, you, you make a couple passes, and you just you just block your your paper up. It doesn't really do anything except glaze the top of the board. And um, you know, if you want to treat it with some kind of fretboard oil, you got to have some open pores. You glaze it. It's just going to lay on top of it. So. There we go. It's looking kind of glazed right there because my paper's plugged up. I had a couple of pretty heavy scratches in there from the 60 that I was able to pull out with the uh, with the 80. And so I'm going to clean this 150 up a little bit and do a couple more passes and then we'll be moving on to the 220. From uh, the last time, um, ran out of memory on my card, so I'm not exactly sure where it dropped off at. But um, I was, um, you know, running a compound radius on this board, 16 on the body end, nine and a half on the nut end. Um, I I can do that because I'm using a fender style bridge, uh, kind of a kind of a Telecaster situation. And um, if I were using a Gibson style bridge, uh, you know, regular, uh, uh, oh gosh, what do they call those things? I just get used to calling them Toms. Um, Tinomatics, that's it. Uh, they're, you know, they're basically set at 11 and a half to 12, depending on who's you buy. Uh, <clears throat> in a situation like that, you obviously well, obvious to me, you got to have a 12 inch radius on your board. I like my uh, radius uh, on my bridge to match the radius on my board. I can set that on a, on a fender style bridge because they're individually. You can raise or lower them individually, set your radius anywhere you want. So, that being said, I am able to go out as flat as 16 on the, uh, on the body end. And then uh, I'll just raise or lower as needed to to get my uh, my radius to match. Um, so, what was the other thing we were talking about? I was talking about sanding out to 320. I went ahead, I was up to about 220. I was cleaning the slots uh, out, you know, with my, my X-Acto knife, wherever we're at here. And uh, I got up around this end somewhere, and I didn't even realize I'd done it, but I scratched the board really deep uh, with my, my razor blade. 
And uh, so when I dusted everything off, I went, oh, crap. So basically, I went back down to 80 because I was trying with some finer grits, and it wasn't. I was it was fairly deep. So uh, I got it all sanded out again. I'm, I'm sanded out to 320, uh, checking my radiuses and my my straightness all the way along, and everything is really nice. It's uh, very very clean. I um, okay. I have since, and you will not be able to see this. I have since laid out my my side dots. And uh, and that's what I'm in the process of doing right now, and I didn't want to just get ahead of the game here. So what I've done is uh, I did a little pre-test, drilled, drilled a little block of wood with the, oops. I measured my, uh, my uh, inlay here, which is a piece of copper tubing, or brass tubing, copper. And uh, did a pretest just to make sure that things were going to be good and it is a perfect fit. So the downside is it's a small enough drill bit that it doesn't fit. It's about 93 thousandths, whatever that works out into fractions. Um, it doesn't fit in my drill press, so I have to do it by hand. I'm not a fan of that. I'd like to make sure that I'm getting a nice square hole. I can do it freehand, I'm going to have to do it freehand, so at any rate, I am in the process of laying those holes out. So I uh, just used my my 6 inch rule and uh, laid it out. So those are, all my holes are going to be centered, that's not an issue. What I'm doing now is I'm just using my my rule again, I'm coming in 230 seconds from the edge where the where the board meets the, the neck. I'm coming up 230 seconds uh, and then I'm just seeing how centered I am on my line there and I'm good and I'm good there and I just give it a good push so that I have a nice nice deep uh, mark in the edge so that when I drill this it'll go where I want it. Drill bits, especially metal drill bits tend to wander uh, in, in wood grain and so unless you have given it a place to go there we go uh, it's gonna it's gonna roll off. The other thing I do when I'm doing this sort of stuff is I spin my drill my, back, my drill bit backwards as I go. This pair at the 12th fret is always the interesting one. It seems uh, like it's always difficult to get these things to really look parallel unless you've got a CNC machine. I know, I, I guess I, I have used larger side dots in the past because I, I know more than once I actually just set up with a straight edge and clamped a straight edge uh, and was able to just keep the board, just push the board along in my drill press and uh, and maintain my straight line that way. And so uh, I, guess I must have been using larger side dots because I've got the same drill press I've always had. You see those don't even look right to eye right now. They measure, huh? This maybe I can't trust my eye. I don't know. Well, I am looking through my magnifiers. They can tend to distort reality a bit. <clears throat> they can let you. You can see really good, but it's sometimes it's kind of fish eye. Fish eye. Okay, so you get the idea there. And so I'll mark these other ones when I come back. Meanwhile, um, grab a slight a little piece of tape. <clears throat> I'm just putting a depth 
stop on my drill bit because I don't need to go in any farther than that, which looks like about 3 16 And like I said, I'm going to spin backwards first. Get myself well centered there. And uh, I'm looking through my regular glasses and I'm holding my drill up straight both directions. I'm all good. And actually you don't have to see the tape to know that when you hit the bottom it, uh, it clears your chips up for you so you know right where you are. Going backwards. that's enough for now and uh, I think I decided I'm going to use ebony to fill this with so I'm going to be cutting myself uh, a bunch of little pieces and uh, deburring the end and then installing them and then I'll take a little uh, countersink and clean out the inside edge and then drive some, whittle some ebony down, drive some ebony in there. Um, maybe, maybe I'll drive maple in there so that they're lighter, so that there's a good contrast with the edge of the board. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> 